utility stocks don't grow very fast. They're primarily invested in for the high yield and the high payout ratio. They normally pay a very high portion of their earnings out in dividends. Now, one problem is, therefore, you have to be very careful investing in utilities. Like Note Spire, look how the price tracks earnings and then how it got overvalued coming into COVID, and now the stock is trading back at a reasonable valuation. You have to be very, very careful buying utility stocks. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer Software Tool. Welcome you to number 11, part 11 of my review of finding fairly value high-quality stocks in all the 11 sectors. This is my last one, and frankly, I didn't necessarily save the best for last because I found very, very little in the utility sector. The problem with utility sector is it's, you know, it's regulated in many, many cases, not all cases. It has tends to have very low growth rates because of that. And since it grows so slow, it has to pay out a very large portion of its dividends, of its earnings and dividends, excuse me. So, you know, utility stocks really are primarily for the yield and for the safety and quality in in many cases because they are regulated. But I'm going to take a look at it, the industry here, and I'm also going to take the opportunity, since I didn't find very much to talk about here, to try to interject some value investing principles in this video because I was asked questions in the last video about the relationship between, for example, about the relationship between earnings and growth. And I want to clarify that a little bit with this video if I can. So let's go ahead and get started. This is the portfolio I put together I screened for. This is not the companies I screened. I only actually screened three companies out of this sector. I I screened Spire Inc., I screened Ottertel and Power, and I screened out Southwest Gas Holdings, which I showed or featured in the beginning in the first video. The problem is I couldn't find anything that met all my screening criteria. For example, we'll start with Otter Tail here. Otter Tail is a company that you know yields 2.73%. It trades at less than 15 times earnings. But note how erratic its earnings have been and how low the growth rate. It's only averaging about 3% growth. The company is also expected to have bad earnings for the next couple of years. So You know, this is the reason I wanted to interject this as a value investing lesson is because even though it's technically fairly valued, if the earnings do drop over the next two years, like they're basically expected to, then this would not be an opportune time to investing Otter Tail Corporation. So, you know, utilities have their certain characteristics that you need to be aware of when you're considering them. Southwest Gas Holdings is a gas utility, and you can see that it's grown about 6.8%. That's typically high or fast for utility stocks, but this is specifically a gas utility. It does have a very good dividend record, but note that, you know, the company's growth and earnings are going to be highly correlated. You know, the company ended up generating 5.5% capital gains, generated a lot of dividends. They underperformed the market in capital gains, outperformed the market in dividends, But the point is, the company's earnings and price followed its growth rate, and that's what generated the rate of return. So there's Southwest Gas Holdings. I don't consider this one a bargain at these prices, but I do consider it at least reasonably valued. The next company I want to feature, it leaves now the companies that I was screening for, because this is the kind of company I would normally expect to find. But I didn't because you'll note that the price was above the earnings justified valuation line here. You can see how closely this company's stock price tracks that that 15 times earnings, which is a kind of a standard bearer for many companies. Obviously, because it grows at you know 4.5%, if I shorten this time frame, I want you to note that that growth rate drops down to 3%. And it becomes crystal clear that when the stock gets a little bit overvalued like it is today, you know, the PE today is 19, here's the PE at 18, that led to several years of just, you know, kind of anemic capital appreciation, you know, $28 on a $10,000 investment over five or six years here. But it did generate some decent income and ended up offering a 4% total rate of return because of the dividend. Again, I want you to note the very high payout ratios here in the 75 and 80% range, which is very typical of utility stocks. But now the lesson here is that 
Valuation is a measurement of soundness. So it simply means that you can participate in the growth of the business if you buy the business at value. If you overpay for the business, like these periods here, then you're not going to participate in the growth as anemic as it actually turned out to be. So valuation is not really a metric for total return or for high return. It's a metric of soundness. You know, Southern Company is clearly overvalued right now, in my opinion, when you look at the historical precedent that this company trended. So this company would have normally showed up on a screen, you know, many, many times, but it's overvalued today. The next one I want to show is Con Ed it has growth rate of 1.6%. Our formula values that at around 11.8 times earnings. You know, I often say any company is worth 15 times earnings, and this is a 15.98, actually 16 times earnings, but that's close enough. You get the picture that, you know, that's a pretty good proxy for fair value. But the problem is you don't get any growth here. So even though you buy the stock at fair value, you know, you buy it here at, at fair value, roughly, that's a, a generous PE. And again, you make almost no capital appreciation, one and a half percent capital appreciation. Your total return is dependent on a dividend. So the message here is if you're buying utility stocks, you're typically investing in them for the income. So you don't want to overpay for them because that means you're going to get less income and you don't want to overpay for them because that means you're not going to participate fully in their growth, which is generally anemic in the first place. Now, there are exceptions. You know, one of my favorite utilities on the planet is Wisconsin Energy, and it grows at almost seven and a half percent. That's almost twice as fast as the average utility. And it's been a terrific stock, but it has become overvalued. I just want you to notice here how volatile it's gotten and how, you know, it's really gone sideways. There's been a lot of ups and downs here in the last two or three years, but the stock really hasn't gone anywhere. And I think the issue here is the fact that it's overvalued. It does offer an enticing 3% yield, but it really doesn't have the earnings yield that you would want to see in an investment. And then next would be UGI. It did not screen because it's not rated. I, I looked for only triple B or better rated stocks, but this is another classic example of another utility, gas utility, with pretty good growth, faster growth than most utilities. Therefore, it also has lower dividend payout ratio. I want you to notice that. But you can see how important the relationship between earnings and price is. When it got overvalued, it definitely had a major correction. And of course, it came into COVID and it just really corrected even more, although it was already correcting quite a bit before COVID came about. But now look how quickly it rallied. And now here we have it undervalued offers a 3.6% yield. I do think this is a very attractive utility, gas utility today. And for disclosure, I'm long this one. And I do think it offers you a margin of safety today. The margin of safety simply means that the price is trading below the earnings justified valuation line, which gives it a little buffer if we do face an inevitable bear market like I believe we're getting ready to face. And then last but not least, I want to show my absolute favorite utility. And I want to do it and interject some of these investing, value investing principles I talked about. This is Next Air Energy. And, you know, along with Wisconsin Energy, it's my top two favorite utilities if you could buy them at fair value. Because fair value is a measurement of soundness. Okay. And, you know, if you look at the price historically, and I'm going to put the weekly closing stock prices on the graph, you can see that the price has tracked earnings very closely since 2013. Then we've got in this crazy, irrational, exuberant market, just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. I'll put the normal PE line on there. And you can see that, you know, it's normally an 18 times earnings company over this time frame. But that's because all these PEs are much higher than 18 times earnings. So it's got really crazy value. You can see it starting to correct. Okay, terrific utility. Love the growth, love the consistency, love the dividend growth of the company from a performance standpoint, it's one of the few utilities that you can look at and say, hey, it really outperformed the S&P 500. But it did it in terms of massively outperformed it on income and massively outperformed it on growth. But that's not totally an accurate statement from the standpoint of valuation, because a lot of that outperformance came from the stock being significantly overvalued today. Again, it's a very popular utility. So I want to do something for you here to make a point. I want to close this video by making this point. Here you could have bought it at a reasonable, reasonably close to fair value. That's a P.E. of 13. Okay, if you measured it out to fair value, which is a P.E. of 15, 
you would have averaged about 8.5% return. That's slightly higher than the growth rate because you got a little bit of natural leverage. You got a PE expanded from 13 to 15. But as you can see, the price went significantly above that. Okay, so the point I'm getting at is, is if you're buying at value, your objective becomes to participate in the growth of the business. Now, if you get a crazy market like we have today, you get what I call false profits or you get a benefit of the stock being overvalued. So if you're looking at it from that point of view, you know, from it being overvalued today, you know, you're looking at a rate of return that goes up to over 13 percent, you know, rather than the eight ish percent that I showed you earlier. But the point is, this is a very dangerous level of valuation here, because ultimately, I believe you'll see next era energy come back into fair value. And when and if you do, that's when I would be a buyer of next era energy, because I love the business. I, I love everything about it, except the current price, as Warren Buffett so eloquently stated it many times. Price is what you pay. Value is what you get. Anyway, that's that's the utility sector. That's the final video in this 11 series that I've done here on covering each sector, looking for value in the, in the highest quality names I could find. I hope you enjoyed the series. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you enjoyed the final summary that I offered here in this video. If you did, you know, give me a like, ring the bell, subscribe to the channel. You know, Make sure you can get notice of other videos coming up here. The next video I'm going to do, the next major video I'm going to do, I've been requested on my next week's Subscriber Tuesday video, I've been asked if I could give a list of good quality dividend growth stocks for investors to look at. And uh, I'm going to try to put together a list of what I call very high, what I consider to be very high quality dividend growth stocks that are undervalued and offer a margin of safety. So tune in to see what I came up with. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys again very soon.